In this presentation, we're going to continue on with part two of recording our typical kind of month end type expenses like the telephone and utility type expenses. Get ready because here we go with Applos. Here we are in our not for profit organization dashboard. We're going to be heading on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. So we're going to be on over in Excel. We're in the eighth tab. Last time we made these first two ones green because we did those ones. And now we're going to continue to make the next one green because that's the next one we're going to do. We're going to be recording our expenses. This is going to be the utilities expense. We're going to right click on that one, make it green. So we're going to be paying, we're going to say Edison. That means cash is going down. Other side, utilities expense. Let's go back on over to our uh, applos. We're going to be going to the fund uh, accounting. We're going to go to the transactions. I think the easiest way to enter this is with the register for the check register. So we're going to go into that check register. We got the checking up top date. Let's bring this on back to January, January 31st. We're going to say the payee. We're going to say Edison is going to be our utility company. So that's our power company, Edison. So we'll pick that up. I'm not going to put a comment. Uh, probably good to do so when you can. I'm going to say 9100. I'm going to type that too as I say it. No check number for this because we're going to say that uh, we're doing an electronically account. Do we have a utilities account? Did they give us one? We don't. So first month of operations, we're just going to add them as we go. Going up top, right clicking on this tab, duplicating it. I would typically have these two tabs open so that we can jump back and forth from the chart of accounts as we into the first month of operations. We got the, the fund accounting over here and then we're going to go into the accounts drop down the good old account list. We're going to be thinking about those accounts as we add them, which accounts we want to add. So utilities. So now we're talking electric. I could put it into an electric expense or try to group some of the utilities. To me, typically utilities includes electric and gas. Uh, if you want to break those two out, you can. If you wanted to include the telephone, for example, in utilities, you can. But I think at this point, uh, the standard convention to me at least would be utilities being electric and gas for most uh, organizations. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go uh, the 53, uh, let's say 60. So 5360, 5360. We're going to make it the unrestricted category. I'm going to say utilities. And again, you might have just an urge to put expense by, the, by that. You can, but it's already in the expense category. So either way is fine. So then I'm going to say save 53600, then populates down here in accordance with the account numbers and by category. And then we're going to go back to the first tab. We're going to type that number in then because we just added it for that purpose. 5360, there it is, utilities. Unrestricted category, we're not going to be adding any tags. That's it. Let's go ahead and submit it. So we'll submit that one. Now we saw these two on the financials last time. I'm not going to go back into it uh, until the end here. So the expenses went up. The other side is going to go to cash. Let's check it out again. Let's go back on over and say that one's done. We've highlighted it. Now let's do the next one, which is uh, uh, supplies. Now I'm going to say this is going to uh, Office Depot that we're buying supplies from, from. So I'm going to say Office Depot supplies. So let's go back on over and say we've got the date once again 30th of January and then the payee I'm going to say office depot and this is going to be new or we have it here already office depot there's a c next to it for some reason but I'm going to pick that one up and then we're going to say the amount is 500 we might want to say what the supplies are because this is this is kind of like a generic category so we might want to list you know general office supplies that we got there and then we're going to say that do we have a supplies account now this one i think they gave us one that's somewhat appropriate in our expenses where we have uh, we have the printing uh, and postage and then they also have up here didn't we have another one rent building office supplies so that's where i would put that one so they've got that one set up for us just remember that that office supplies is, a, like I say, a kind of a dumping ground sometimes for people. So it could become miscellaneous. In other words, they put all expenses to, to office supplies. So, you, you know, you want to think about how much you want to go in there and which accounts you want to break out from there. Unrestricted. And then we'll add the tags later. So let's submit that one. And then let's take a look at our reports now because I think the next one's going to be a little bit different. So let's go to the second tab then open up our reports from here. Right-clicking on that tab. 
duplicating that tab. Then we're going to go to the reports on the right side. We're going to be opening up our favorite two reports. That's going to be the balance sheet, but by the fund, fund balance sheet, because it's more fun. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left and right click on it, duplicate it again. We're going to be opening up our income statement by going to the reports and then opening up the income statement, income statement by fund once again. Going back to the balance sheet by fund, we're going to change the date. Date, let's bring it on back to January 30th, January 31st, January 31st. And then we'll say, there we go. And then the checking account should be decreasing. So I'm going to go on over to the checking account. Also, just remember that you, when you see this report, you might want to see the totals too. So you might want to always just kind of check this off and you might want to save this. We'll talk about memorizing reports later. But you can say the drop down and say, hey, I'd like to see the total columns and say apply. And then you'll get your total column uh, over here for the total in the checking account. So it doesn't look like negative, which could be kind of scary. And so then you're going to go down and say that uh, there's the there's the post office and uh, there is Edison. So that's that. Let's go on back to the uh, to the balance sheet. Then let's go to the income statement. And let's refresh the incomes or let's date. We need dates. And we're going to bring this from this year to date. This year to date. Once again, you might want to hit the good old drop down and say, hey, I'd like to see the totals. Would you show me the totals, please? And then say yes. And if you ask nicely, then sometimes they'll apply it and sometimes not. So let's say totals, totals, and then apply. So let's see that. There we go. All right. And then we're going to say down here that now we have the printing and postage and the utilities both in the unrestricted category. We're going to give more detail on the unrestricted category using tags. We'll do that later. Now let's go back to our Excel. The last one's going to be a little bit different. So now we're going to say we have office supplies again, but now we didn't pay for them yet. We're going to say this one's going to go to a payable. So this, in other words, would be like a bill that we're going to enter into the system. Now, bills no, can be useful for, for some different reasons. You might want to enter this information in as a bill, basically, and then sort your bills, pick which bills you want to print, and then print them. And if you're printing the checks from the system, that could be kind of a useful way to, to, to sort that information. Uh, but the basic idea of the bill, then, is we're going to be entering this uh, using a, a different form, and it will be increasing the liability account, accounts payable that we have not yet paid. The other side go into the expense, in this case, the supplies expense. Then we can attract those payables that we owe, which uh, and then pay them at another time. So that's uh, going to be increasing then the accounts payable. So accounts payable is going to be increasing. The other side go into the expense. All right. So I'll make that one green because that's the one we're on, even though it's on the bottom. Because all the other ones were green and that, that'll mess me up if I don't make this one green. Because it's the last green one. We're working on the last green one. All right, then we're going to go back on over. We're going to go to the first tab. Then we're going to go to the uh, fund accounting again. We're looking at those transactions. We want an accounts payable transaction. So the accounts payable is going up. Accounts payable type transaction. This is basically kind of like a bill transaction if you're used to something like a, a QuickBooks. So then we're going to say the vendor is going to be Office uh, Depot again. So I'm going to say Office Depot memo. I'm not going to put one reference number. I'm not going to put one date. I'm going to say is January 30th, January 30th terms. Now, if we set the terms, it'll set the due date. So whatever the due date on you know the bill is, you could put the due date manually over here or you could set the term, which will populate the due date automatically. And then I'm going to say the amount, I believe was 500 again, was it? It was, uh, no, 4,500. Good thing I checked that time. 4,500, remaining balance, 4,500. Okay, and then will be the office expenses. So that's going to be the 5300 office expenses. And then it's going to go to the fund of the unrestricted fund. So that's going to be the fund. We're not going to then have the tags here. Now, the percent, you can either put the percent or the amount that's going to be applied here. I'm just going to put 100% and then, and then say tab, and it'll populate the total, bringing that total 4,500 down to here. If we were to add other uh, categories, as we will do in the future, 
this percentage breakout great tool will help us to break out as we break out between the tags for the unrestricted categories 2020 2040 breakout as we'll see we'll do that later let's go ahead and submit this once we do however just note what's going to happen accounts payable should be going up the other side should be going to that expense account so let's say submit and see if it if it gives me any kind of red thing saying i messed up or anything like that it wants a memo there's a red thing so we're going to say this is for uh, postage let's just say on the or let's say office supplies office supplies and then let's submit it again see if i get any other more red things that say i messed up somehow nope that looks good and now if you move back down to the bottom you'll get kind of a, a summary of, of your activity down here. I'm going to go back to our reports now. Go back up to our reports balance sheet. Let's refresh the balance sheet with a little refresh button and uh, see what we have here. Then I'm going to go back down. We want to look at our liabilities. There's our accounts payable. There's the 4,500 in it. That's what we would expect to see because we just have the bill. And there's the bill. Note anytime you see bill, that means uh, it's a bill to us. And just remember that uh, when you see these transaction types, you want to get a, an idea in your mind what the transaction types mean. It's really useful. What's going to be the transaction? What are the accounts that are affected? Also note that a bill means that it's a bill that someone paid to us. You know, the bill that we're sending to somebody else for work that we did. In theory, if we're a for-profit, you know, it would be an invoice. So the bills are the things that we have to pay. The invoices or the outgoing things are usually the things that we... Um, are charging for for work that we did so an invoice to someone else would be a bill to us right if they sent out an invoice to us it's still a bill okay so then if we then go to the income statement uh, check out the income statement and we want to refresh that screen we should see then down at the bottom that we have now another expense or an increase to the expense that we had already created for the uh, supplies. Office supplies is now at that 5,000. 5,000 consisting of these two items. There's the 4,500 we just set up. Let's go on back over to the income statement. Back to the, to the previous tab. I want to open up another report here now. So I'm going to go and open up another report by going to the reports all the way to the right. And then we want a, we want a su supporting report for the payables that we owe. So if I go back down to the bottom of these reports, to the other reports, we can have an aged payable. So similar to our aged receivable. So we've just entered a payable. So now we've got, okay, here's our payable information. And uh, so this gives us our aged payable report. If I bring this back to January, so January there there we have it so these are people we owe this one this one is still in the current category as opposed to one to 30 days and 30 to 60 and so on and so forth let's go back to the first tab now now obviously this the the number here 4500 on this report note should also tie out to if i go back to the balance sheet the number here on the accounts payable so a typical question would be how much money do we owe other people at this point in time balance sheet 4500 who do we owe who do we have to write a check to and, and how outstanding are these debts we go then to the supporting report for that number here 4500 is all we owe to uh, one vendor that being office depot okay let's go back to the to the first tab again and then if we go into the people uh, just we can also see within the people section if we go to the contact list and say that we have the office depot down here you could see the activity for for you could see our, our customers and vendors here so you could see our items uh age payable so there's our age payable for uh the office details so that's another another way you can get basically information you can also just note that we're building our contact list as we're going our, our people list which includes customers and vendors also note that I am uh, going to be printing the trial balance as we go. Uh, and let me just take a look at that trial balance. And so you'll have these reports for you that will at least give you the account totals. I won't break out all the fund information, but they'll give you the, the account totals so you can check your total numbers as you go through these practice problems. You can find the trial balance by going down to the, to the bottom uh, of these reports. And it's all the way at the bottom. Uh, reports uh, you likely won't use, but we'll uh, build them anyways. The trial balance, okay. I like the trial balance. I don't know. 
So this is going to be the trial balance by debits and credits, and it's it's useful because you can um, have all the accounts basically on one report, including the balance sheet accounts and the income statement accounts. So you can check basically all of your numbers with this one report. So I think it's a good review report. We will be print printing this after many of the presentations, so you can kind of check your numbers there if you're working along with the practice problem as you go. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.